The most powerful weapon the West gave Ukraine. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. It's pretty wild how the U.S. is sending armored vehicles to Haiti to help quash the exact sort of uprising it's been actively trying to create in places like Iran, Venezuela, Cuba, and Hong Kong. The Pentagon is seeking sweeping new powers in preparation for a war with China. The Senate NDAA bill increases proposed military aid to Taiwan from $4.5 to $10 billion. And Tony Blinken is claiming without evidence that Beijing has greatly accelerated its plans to annex Taiwan. This is all as aggressions continue to ramp up against Russia. They really are doing this thing. So it looks like this is what we'll be doing for the foreseeable future, calling to escalate the war in Ukraine, facilitating the escalation of the war in Ukraine, and then screaming with shock and outrage when the war in Ukraine escalates. That seems to be what we've got planned. Maybe my government is actually in the wrong here and is just lying and manipulating to advance its own interests. Should be a much more common thought. It's a line of inquiry that should be taught to school children. It is by design that it doesn't occur to people more often. The most powerful weapon the West has given Ukraine is not the High Mars, it's the U.S. propaganda machine. The only people who support Western proxy warfare in Ukraine are those who deny the extensively documented ways the Western Empire has provoked, sustained, manipulated, and exploited this war. You can only support what's being done by lying and or being lied to. Calling for de-escalation actually causes escalation is the single dumbest empire bro talking point yet to emerge from this war. Still laughing about how liberals just spent months amplifying and celebrating a trolling operation founded by a literal Nazi. If nuclear war erupts, it won't matter whose fault it was. It won't matter who started it. It won't matter whether Moscow had legitimate claim to Zaporizhia. All that will matter is that it happened. There will be no adjudicating responsibility after the fact. We won't be here. The time to turn away from the trajectory toward nuclear war is now, not later. It's bizarre how many people I get telling me, well, if nuclear war happens, it'll be Putin's fault. Like that will be any comfort to them as they hug their family close and wait for a horrific death. There's just so much sloppy thinking about the actual end of the world. People aren't looking directly at this thing and thinking rigorously about what it would mean, what it would entail. This is understandable. It's a terrible thing to contemplate, but we do urgently need to. People don't seem to get that nuclear annihilation is the one mistake we could make that we can't ever fix. There's this unquestioned assumption that if it happened, there'd be some kind of course correction afterward, but there won't be. No one will be here to do it. No takesies backsies. People can't imagine their own absence. That's why we make up stories about life after death. It's also why we're having a hard time squarely facing the prospect of an Earth with no humans on it. People still assume human inventions like fault and blame will remain after us. People kill themselves by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge a lot. The few survivors all say that the first thought they had upon freefall was instant regret. They realize in an instant that every problem they have can be solved except for the one they had just given themselves. Imagine having that thought, but it's all life on earth that we have killed. That's what nuclear holocaust is. A moment of instant, terrible regret, followed by the blackness of the void. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, the top news story every day was how that whole Cuban Missile Crisis situation is going. During the nuclear brinkmanship crisis of 2022, the top news stories are about Kanye, Trump, and Alex Jones. We are sleepwalking toward a cliff's edge. A sane society would chase off anyone who advocated nuclear brinkmanship and drive them out of human civilization. 
In our society, we give them punditry gigs on mainstream media platforms and lucrative jobs at influential think tanks. There are people among us who dress up their personal suicidal ideations as a world-weary, humble knowing that humans are shit and we need to die. I call these omnicidal ideations, and they are not noble or humble. They are monstrous and at odds with all life on earth. If you can't want to live for yourself, then live for your dog. Live for the ladybugs. Live for all the innocents that don't deserve any of this. This is all completely unnecessary. There is nothing inscribed upon the fabric of reality saying states need to be waving Armageddon weapons at each other. There is no valid reason not to lay aside these games of global conquest and collaborate together toward a healthy coexistence on this planet. We could have such a beautiful world. All the energy we pour into competition and conquest could go toward innovation that benefits us all, making sure everyone has enough, eliminating human suffering and the need for human toil. We are trading heaven on earth for elite ego games. There's no valid reason we can't move from models of competition and domination to models of collaboration and care. Collaboration with each other, care for each other. Collaboration with our ecosystem, care for our ecosystem. We are throwing it away in exchange for senseless misery and peril. <laughs>